Hi everyone, and welcome to English 101. This is going to be our first content episode of Punctuated. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to recognize punctuation. We're gonna look at the seven most basic types of punctuation. These do 95% of the heavy lifting in your writing in terms of explaining to the reader how your thoughts are, should, should be interpreted or conveyed. So what we're gonna look at now is just how to recognize pieces of punctuation, and we'll talk very, very briefly and glancingly about how they're used, but this is a recognition video. If you've ever taken an English class or any kind of writing class in all probability, you've probably seen this. This represents the line on your paper. This is not an overhead shot of a roadway. If you were to write a capital letter A, it would look something like this. A lowercase a would look something like this. So you can see how this is conveying the thought of a single line on a piece of paper. So now let's talk about the basic, the seven most basic types of punctuation and what they look like. So starting over here with this piece of punctuation, this guy is called a period. If you're learning or familiar with a traditional British type of grammar, you might call this the full stop. They're the same thing. We're gonna be focusing on American English in this video, but where I know a British terminology or variants, I'll include it. I don't know all of them. I'm definitely not a British English expert, but uh, I do know this one, sometimes called the full stop. So the period ends a sentence. It has a couple of other uses. We'll touch on those in the period specific video that's gonna be coming up in a while. Uh, but that's what it looks like. The period is a round dot placed at the bottom of the line. It's usually married up against the end of, a, of a, a word. There's a letter usually right next to it. But this is it, round dot, bottom of the line. The next one, the next most basic piece is the comma. The comma can look like this, just a semicircular line that goes through the bottom of the line. Or it might have a little nub up here, depending on what font you're using. Both of them, the, the single line or the line with the nub, mean the exact same thing when it's placed here at the bottom of the line crossing through the bottom. The comma is the most powerful piece of punctuation in English when it comes to conveying your thoughts to your readers and explaining things so that people understand what you're trying to say when you write. There are going to be a lot of videos in this series on the comma. It's really huge and fantastic, a lot of fun to use. The next is the semicolon, and the semicolon is a comma with a period above it. So it can also have a little nub here, or it can be just a straight semicircular line that's not quite that long. Let's make that shorter, that's better. So the semicolon is a comma with a period above it. This signifies, the fact that it has a period above it signifies that it's a little bit more, well, powerful is the wrong word, but that it serves a slightly different function than the comma. The comma can be inserted into the middle of a thought. The semicolon can be inserted where a thought ends and another complete thought begins within the same sentence. That's why it has a period hanging out above it going, hey, I'm a period, I'm right here, hanging out. It cannot end a sentence, of course, only the, uh, the, the period can end a sentence. The semicolon has a lot of great uses and in the semicolon videos that are gonna be coming up, we'll take a look at how to use a semicolon very effectively. Used well, the semicolon is a great tool for helping people understand what you wanna say. Typographically, the semicolon can appear a few different ways. They're all variations on the same theme. It's always gonna be a comma with a period above it. I write the period in the bottom half of the line at the top. I've also seen it with a period up here or up here. It's the same piece of punctuation where the period goes is simply a factor of the font that you've selected to use. The next piece is the colon. The colon is a great and also very powerful piece of punctuation that draws a lot of attention to itself. It's two dots in the middle of the bottom half and the middle of the top half. It's two periods. Now, if the period is used to end a sentence, this doesn't end two sentences. It has a whole different use. But because it's two periods, it draws a lot of attention to itself. And when we do the colon video, I'll show you how to use the colon effectively to convey your thoughts in a pretty exciting way. 
It's a great piece of punctuation. It's my favorite piece of punctuation, actually. I love the comma, but the colon has got so many great uses, and it's changed a lot over the years. It's a lot of fun to use these. This next one is the apostrophe. The apostrophe is the same typographic symbol as a comma, but it's hanging out way up at the top. Uh, and this is used within words. It has a few different uses. It's used within words to indicate missing letters or uh, speech patterns, things like that. When we do the apostrophe video, we'll go over all of the uses for the apostrophe, but this is how to recognize it. It looks exactly like a comma, but it's up at the top of the line. The next one here, are these are quotation marks. They're not quotes. The quotes are the things that go inside of them. These are quotation marks. That's what they're called. Quotes marks, I wouldn't, you know, if I were teaching, I wouldn't mark someone down for calling them quotes marks, but the full name, the correct name is quotation marks. These look like two commas facing inward and two commas facing inward this way. Uh, I don't have little nubs on the top of them, but they can. There's no reason that they shouldn't. It's just a matter of the font choice. But they always point in towards the quote. After this one, the quote starts. After this one, the quote ends. So they have a very limited range of use, but there are some specific rules for using them that will help your readers understand what's going on with your writing when they're used correctly. And the last piece we're going to talk about how to identify are parentheses. This one's badly, badly drawn. They are full length, so partly gently curved. They're not half circles, they're gently curving lines that go from the top to the bottom of the line. Different fonts sometimes extend them past the line. A parentheses is just a slightly curved line that goes from the top to the bottom. There's one that curves this way and there's one that curves this way, and they're used to open and close content which is placed inside of parentheses. These also have a number of good uses and some very specific rules about how to use them and how to use them around punctuation. So as we get to the parentheses episode, we'll talk about the, the rules on how to use them and some of the ways that you can accidentally trip yourself up using them incorrectly. Now there are other pieces of punctuation besides these, like the M and N dash, the hyphen, single, single quotation marks, things like that. We'll get to those in a later video, talking about the less used pieces of punctuation as those punctuation specific videos get closer. So in the meantime, these are the seven most basic pieces of punctuation and the next seven or more videos in this series, we'll talk about how to use these pieces of punctuation.